Booyah, what is happening, fan base, and welcome back to another episode of Honest Descriptions. It's been forever since we've done a conventional one, so here you go. In case you are unaware, the word honest in the title has quotation marks, but that doesn't stop everything I'm saying from being absolute 100% fact, and 9 out of 10 dentists would recommend. So let's start from the bottom, and you should be aware there will be no manga spoilers, pure anime awesomeness. And a wee bit of cringe. First hero that I'm going to be talking about it's the S-Class hero number 17, Puri Puri Prisoner. Now, for those of you who don't know, he is probably the fan favorite character of humanity. Humanity likes Puri Puri Prisoner. Now, some of you may not be aware that he is actually the inspiration for three incredible things that we know and love. Even though One Punch Man came out in 2009, since Saitama could punch time to defeat it in one shot, I think it's safe to say that we don't need to worry about dates here too much. But Puri Puri Prisoner was obviously the inspiration for Sailor Moon. Now, We've all seen the Sailor Moon transformation animations, and we've seen the Pooty Pooty Prisoner transformation animation. And just like Pooty Pooty Prisoner is a little girl transforming into her true form to save humanity, that's exactly what Sailor Moon was all about. Pooty Pooty Prisoner, the inspiration for Sailor Moon, and honestly, Pooty Pooty Prisoner is probably the inspiration for magical girls altogether, but hey, I don't have any evidence for that, so that's just a theory, which is good enough for game theory. Yeah, anyway, he's also clearly the inspiration inspiration for Alex Louis Armstrong from Furumeture Arukimist Brotherhood, which, as we've already established, is the correct pronunciation for the anime, and anyone who does not pronounce it that way is basically doing cultural appropriation. Fact. As we know, Alex Louis Armstrong always respects a man with muscles. He makes sick poses, they're all epic, none of them make you feel awkward, especially when he does that cool handshake thing with Curtis, the husband of Ed and Al's teacher. That was very epic, especially when Curtis flexed his muscles and it tore his shirt to bits, clearly inspired from Pooty Pooty Prisoner, who did the same exact thing so that he could fight his opponent while being able to stretch his legs. He cared about his shirt. And still, despite the odds, he was willing to sacrifice it for the greater good. And of course, the third thing that he inspired was with his angel form, as he beautifully jumped high and spread his arms as glorious, shining wings emanated from behind him. I have never once in my entire life seen something quite as beautiful, majestic, and inspiring as that. Which is why Pooty Pooty Prisoner is is probably the inspiration for Jesus. Fact. Next hero! And the good news is, since there's a hell of a lot of heroes and we don't know a lot of them very well, this video is gonna go a lot faster from here on out, mostly because I don't want to stress the editor, who's a badass! By the way, this was edited by Kor. He really is a badass. He's a great dude. Link to his channel is in the description. Feel free to say hi to him and flood his comments with cringe! Thank you, fanbase. Very cool. And thank you, Kor, for all your help. You are an epic gamer. Anyway, the number 16 hero! Tank Top Master! So when Tank Top Master was introduced, the first thought that crossed all of our heads, don't lie, it was all of our heads, why does it need to be called that name? Anyone who wears a tank top is a master. And then you realize that there's a whole race of tank top fighters in the One Punch Man world, and everything becomes clear because there's not a single plot hole in the entirety of One Punch Man. Triple fact. Okay, I was having fun with it, I I'm gonna stop doing that now. And that's a fact. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Anyway, Tank Top Master's pretty epic because he's as tall as his chest is wide and he's not even a whammon. This is something truly fitting for an S-Class hero and something that we can all get behind or bend down in front of. It's his option, okay? My love for Tank Top Master stems far deeper than most of you can imagine. And a lot of people complain about One Punch Man Season 2's animation, which is obviously the inspiration for uh, the Sonic movie that's coming. And it looks looks pretty sick, not gonna lie. Okay, gonna lie. But in the manga of One Punch Man, Tank Top Master said a line to Moomin Rider, saying, Moomin Rider, are you okay? You're not even wearing a tank top. And I think this was the purest of brilliance emanating from One Punch Man. And of course, the adaptation did not have that line. And I'm not sure if it's the adaptation's fault or if the subs screwed up. So not pinning any blame on JC Staff. No one ever makes fun of JC Staff. I'm not gonna be the first. Funny coincidence that JC Staff takes one Punch Man right after Pooty Pooty Prisoner's arc. <laughs> but as I was saying, the greatness of Tank Top Master was completely neglected in the anime. When he turns to Moomin Rider after Moomin Rider was injured by Hero Hunter Garrow, an absolute powerhouse, and says to him, are you alright? You weren't even wearing a tank top. Implying that if he would be wearing a tank top, he'd be able to brunt the force of Garrow, but without it, he had no chance. The deep philosophical meaning behind this line emanates 
from deep within his mind. The reason why there are all these tank top fighters, tank top black hole, tank top tiger, tank top vegetarian, and tank top master is because of community. They're bonding together for something they care about. <laughs> They give life their all. They're friends with one another. They'll stand there not embarrassed of what the world has to say about them. They'll stand up for their tank top community. And even though to the average onlooker, it's less armor. Moomin Rider's the guy with a helmet, with a protective vest, with goggles, with everything. And Tank Top Master's just wearing a tank top. But Tank Top looks at him and says, you don't even have a tank top. You don't even have that bonded community by your side to help you. Tank Top Master is an inspiration to us all. And we should all wear a tank top in our heart. <laughs> oh my god, this totally isn't becoming a meme on the channel. Next, we have Metal Bat, a hero that just sprung forth in the latest episode of One Punch Man, and boy did he take the world by storm. He is a superhero that dresses like the typical gangster Japanese kid that you see everywhere, but the twist is he also has a metal baseball bat. Yes, truly the most fascinating character design I've seen in generations. Now, most of you do not seem to understand the gravity of the situation. While most heroes would have heroic weapons, he drops all that. He doesn't care about the pretext. This is his weapon of choice to show everyone that they can channel their inner selves to also become a hero. Even if you're a gangster that's swinging around a baseball bat, if you swing your baseball bat in the right direction, you can grow to new heights. I especially appreciate his ultimate hero move. Oh, you're probably thinking about when he stood on top of the giant centipede monster and whacked him in the face. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I mean the real move. I saw that anime episode, I know what went on. He was fighting the centipede monsters, he was losing, and then he used his special move to whack himself in the head with a metal bat to wake himself up. Now that is commitment! That is power, and that's a special move that I'm expecting! When I see Naruto powering up, I don't know what move I'm expecting. Is he gonna learn another version of the Rasengan? Is he gonna find out how to make even more shadow clones? Or is he gonna stab himself in the hand? He's done all these things in the past, and these are three of his special go-to moves! I love it when heroes severely hurt themselves on purpose. It looks way more badass than when they hurt themselves by accident. So even though Metal Bat looks like a mix between Josuke and Yusuke and swings around a Metal Bat, my guess is his parents named him Metal Bat when he was a kid. And when he grew up, he was wondering, should I uh, be swinging around a sword, a hockey stick, or a Metal Bat? Oh my god, that's genius! I'm pretty sure that that is how he found his weapon of choice. After his name, not vice versa. Also, he's having some spotlight in the anime right now. Not gonna spoil anything from the manga. Mostly because I didn't read it. Yeah, that's most of the reasons why. But I will read it, and I still won't spoil it. Because I'm a mad lad. All I could say is I love him. Next hero, number 14, Genos, the demon cyborg. So most people say that Genos is the perfect protagonist to One Punch Man, if One Punch Man would be a shonen. Being that it's a seinen, we're focusing on Saitama. I am one of the people that says that, and those people are all totally wrong. I was lying. I totally believe that, and I'm working on a video on Saitama and Genos right now. However, for the sake of honesty, let's make believe it makes no sense. Because think about it. Most heroes have a motive. Naruto, strongest Okage. Luffy, Pirate King. Goku, well, Go Goku's a hard one to pin down. If he would have gotten the wish at the end of the Tournament of Power, he would have said, can we do it again? And you know that's right. But Genos is not like any of that at all. He's just some cyborg dude who wants to take revenge against the cyborg that killed his family, so he becomes a hero. Doesn't really give two shizzes about anything else. He just kind of destroys everything on his path. Doesn't really go out of his way at all. Wow. Upstanding citizen. Classic hero. Very cool. The most ingenuity this guy actually put into his time in the series was to make One Punch Man his sensei. The guy literally gets beaten up every single time he gets into a fight. He fights Mosquito Whammon. She freaking destroys him. He fights Carnage Kabuto. Ends up looking like a sack of potatoes. He fights the Sea King. Gets more beaten up than Moomin Rider. Epic track record right here, fam. Even the fights he wins, he ends up broken to pieces. And yes, I will be giving philosophical reasons to this based on his character because he's a freaking genius character. But what a loser. You're telling me that Metal Bat is beating this dragon class giant centipede monster with a baseball bat and Genos, who's somehow higher in the hero rankings than him, was losing to Mosquito Whammon. Very cool. Genos also has a very wide range of emotions and brilliant personality, like his expressionless, let's track down the robot that killed my family face. Or the expressionless, this 
this guy's about to destroy the city that I'm gonna defend and probably get beaten up face. Or the, wow, Saitama's a total badass hero face. Yes, they all look exactly the same because uh, he's putting up a front to, to barricade his emo- Okay, he doesn't have emotions. I mean, someone pisses off Saitama. And by contrast, Genos is more upset than Saitama, so it kind of seems like he has emotions, but in actuality, nah fam. His best line in the entire series were Saitama was drinking some fruit punch and said, hey Genos, can you pass another fruit punch? And Genos said, master, no, I cannot. And Saitama said, why? And Genos said to him, cause you're a one punch man. Hey yo! I'm kidding, Genos didn't say that. That would have improved his character by way too much for them to handle. I just improved his entire character. You're welcome, next hero. Number 13, Flashy Flash. Yes, a completely epic name for this hero that perfectly represents his superpower. The ability to move so quickly, his molecules move at a speed so intense that he goes right through his clothing. That's why it's Flashy Flash, to tell you exactly how fast he can move. By the name Flashy, it would imply he can move really quickly, like almost light speeds, because he's moving like a flash. But the fact that he says it twice, it's he's moving quickly enough to get naked automatically. Flashy Flash, because he can flash his opponents. Pooty Pooty Prisoner wanted this name originally, because he's a shining angel and flashes his opponents, but Flashy Flashy Flash would have been way too much for him, and therefore, he went with Pooty Pooty Prisoner. Getting naked at light speed is a superpower I've been looking forward to for years on end, so I'm really happy that it had some representation in One Punch Man. S-Class Hero, number 12, Watchdog Man, for Saitama. Number 11, Super Ally Darkshine, Black Saitama. Quite the schnoz on that one. Honestly, I'm pretty sure that originally he did not want the name Super Alloy Darkshine. It's just like too edgy, man. Originally he was looking for big black oily motherfucker, but he changed his mind because it wasn't PG enough for the fans. It was all for the fans. Now, I may be wrong, cause uh, no manga spoilers or anything, but my impression of this guy was he was just a shinier, slightly slightly blacker version of Tank Top Master, and he also didn't have the tank top. Again, honing into the philosophy, Tank Top Master at least was protected by the top of tank, but he had nothing. Nothing was on him because he relied on himself without needing to cling on the vestiges of the outer world, but I get ahead of myself. Now it's 2019, and I don't know if positive racism is considered a bad thing or not, but since black people are generally more badass than white people, he's number 11 when Tank Top Master is number 16. I think it's completely justified. Leave your opinion in the comments. Next, number 10, we have Pig God, which is such a beautiful name and a character that I relate to in a spiritual level. I mean, I didn't read the manga. Does he eat monsters? Because if he eats monsters, this name is so accurate. And I know that's what all you were thinking as well. What I like about Pig God is that not only does he have several chins, no. Not only is he constantly eating and does he have a big belly, which represents a class of society that just lets free and indulges. And despite the fact that they indulge in things people tell them not to, since it's their passion and they're driving themselves forward, still, they work hard and make a place for themselves. They become something that most people with these bad habits can't. He becomes a hero. I'm not condoning this. It's clearly a metaphor for everything in life. But dude, look at his cheeks. He has two levels of cheeks. How many people do you know has double cheeks? This is a level of its own. Look how the top parts of its cheeks sag down on bottom of the lower parts of his cheeks. Honestly, the cheeks of Pig God represent two halves of society coming together, where one spills over the other because of the bad habits they can have. But a super deep analysis on Pig God, even though I know nothing about him coming soon. He eats a lot, though. This, I am sure of. Next, number nine, we have Drive Knight. Drive Knight's literally just a robot dude with one eyeball. They were like, okay, we want another robot dude, but let's give him one eyeball so he doesn't have depth perception. I'm pretty sure that's the thought that went into making Drive Knight. Now, I could be wrong, but I'm not. Next, we have number eight, Zombie Man. They were like, okay, for a cool character design of this guy, let's just move his eyes lower down on his head so his forehead makes Sakura's look nearly invisible. I mean, what do you want me to say? Spider-Man, bitten by a radioactive spider. Batman, he conquers his fears to make it his strength. Superman, he's a superman. The hell's a zombie man? Th does he not die? If you pay attention, none of the actual heroes within the S-Class heroes have superpowers. I mean, except for Tatsumaki. W was Zombie Man bitten by a radioactive zombie? I don't understand. Good thing he didn't take Metal Bat's place in the latest episode where he fought that little plant monster shooting out sleep powder or whatever, because Plants vs. Zombies never ends well for the zombies. Trust me, I know. Zombie from Plants vs. Zombies in Smash when? F off, Waluigi. Number seven, King. Basically, the all might of One Punch Man. I mean, look at him. His flowing mane of golden hair. The strongest man alive. Can't do shiz in a fight on his off day. But despite all this, he is
is a true hero. When Lizard Man wanted to lick Whammon on the street, he revealed his identity. Even though he could not put up a fight against Lizard Man at that point, he went to Lizard Man and said nothing. He stared at him with his cold, prideful stare until Lizard Man decided to walk away. King, despite the fact that the anime is trying to show us that he has no power, it was all through luck and coincidence that he rose in the rankings, I don't buy it for one second. King is the Lord Escanor of One Punch Man, the All Might of this world. Look at that face. That's the face of a true hero. Now, there was a little scene that no one talks about, probably because it's too awesome. But when King was about to fight that giant robot dude, and everyone heard that <laughs> in the background, they didn't know what it was, and then they realized it was King's attack that often begins before a fight that King reveals is his heart. His heartbeat is so loud and fast, everyone around can hear it because of how badass King is. Now, let me apply some anime physics to this. One Piece, Luffy, and his lobby art. Do you remember when he entered Gear Second the first time, and no one really understood how it was? Well, according to interviews and, and research and shiz that I didn't do but I saw elsewhere, it works because Luffy's heart, which is made of rubber, has the ability to start pulsing so much faster and it won't tear or rupture in any way because of its rubber component. Now, since it's doing this pumping so erratically, it can give him extreme strength for brief periods of time. I'm pretty sure that's the logic that they give for it. I don't buy it for two seconds, but in anime, that is basically fact. So, when you hear King's heart like this, you don't hear Luffy's, and that's because King is surpassed Gear Second Luffy easily, and set the programmer power scaled Luffy to be at light speed, so that makes King faster than that, which is basically all might speed, and uh, Lord Escanor too. It's the three blonde badasses of anime. These three guys could take down basically anyone. I don't like people disrespecting my man King, because he's trying to get out of work by playing video games. When One Punch Man inevitably becomes an isekai anime, and they're all trapped in an MMORPG, ha! King is gonna be looked up to and given the respect he deserves. Damn it, I'm looking forward to that art. Next, number six, it's Metal Knight. So, if you notice a very interesting thing about Japan, they mix up knights and robots a lot. Like, Drive Knight isn't really a knight, he's a robot. Metal Knight, he isn't a knight, he's a robot. So, that's why, when Japan finally makes an adaptation of the Dark Knight, I'm really looking forward to Cyborg Batman. I think it'll be dope. Now, Metal Knight is one of the two heroes that did not join the S-Class conference at the end of the first season when Boros was invading the planet, because he doesn't give a damn about anything aside from his research and shiz. Now, he creates these killer robots that are killing people out. Also, Drive Knight told Genos, yo Genos, Metal Knight is this crazy robot nutcase that doesn't give a crap about anything, look out for him. Also, Genos met him once before when the meteor was coming down, and he wanted to test out the robot on the meteor, he didn't give a damn if the meteor would hit. Not very hero-like qualities. Why am I saying this all to you? Because Genos is looking for the cyborg that killed his family, and he didn't even for two split seconds think it might be Metal Knight. Wow, Genos, you really are a shonen protagonist. Dumb as muck. Number five, we have Child Emperor. It's this kid that has this cool robo backpack that blatantly and totally ripped off Gizmo from the original Teen Titans. If you don't think he did, well then, okay, you convinced me. Gizmo ripped off Child Emperor. This is what I've been saying all along, fam. I'm so glad you're on board with this whole thing. I think it makes 100% logical sense. Number four, we have Atomic Samurai. Atomic Samurai is known as the greatest swordsman in the world of One Punch Man, which is definitely very impressive. You know what's not impressive? Him being all prideful about being able to sense strong opponents and shiz, and then not want to shake Saitama's hand because he says that he's a mere B-class loser. Um, not very good at sensing strong opponents, are you? He also has a throwaway line in the manga that I promised I wouldn't spoil, except for this teeny little thing, that, huh, it would be cool if he could fight King, since King is the strongest man on Earth. Very perceptive, aren't you, Atomic Samurai Zan? He's not any old plain samurai. No, he's an atomic one. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing, but it has a better ring to it than cool samurai. Atomic samurai definitely sounds better. I do recommend you keeping that title. But now, allow me to let you in on a secret that you'll see throughout all of anime rings true. There are two types of people that keep a twig in their mouth. The smilers and the frowners. If an anime character has a twig in their mouth and they are frowning, they are going to be an absolutely badass character. If they have a twig in their mouth and they are smiling, then they are going to be a major asshole. This is fact, not theory. You have the right to disagree, but then again, you also have the right to be wrong. Pay attention, it's, it's actually legit true though. Every goddamn time I see a guy with a twig in their mouth and they're smiling,
smiling. God damn, do I end up hating them. But this is One Punch Man, so I expect them to flip it on its head. I love One Punch Man, in case you haven't noticed. It's not like I've been talking about it a lot or anything. But next, we have Bang, or Silver Fang, the number three hero. Now, another very important anime trend. If it's old, it's a badass. Every old dude in anime ends up totally badass, and One Punch Man is not an exception of this rule. I freaking love Bang. When Saitama went to karate chop him, when he wanted to test Saitama, he was able to dodge Saitama. Able to dodge Saitama. No one dodges Saitama. Granted, he wasn't really trying. Granted, Bang is pretty epic, but if you pay attention to Bang, and the reason why I think his name is Bang altogether, it's because someone took a bazooka, shot it at his head, and then it went Bang! Blowing all of his hair, his eyebrows, and his mustache back. I mean, the guy literally looks like he's always walking into 100 mile an hour winds, and it's completely badass. Also, I feel like you can have a whole chess game on the lines of his forehead. That's how badass he is. Again, there's not much to say about badass old dudes in anime. They are all epic. The number two hero, Tatsumaki, or the Tornado of Terror. This is the only S-Class hero that has supernatural abilities, and therefore she wrecks the competition. Also, she's over 18 and a lolly, which makes her perfect waifu material, and not at all weird for me to put on the thumbnail of this video. I also completely freaking love her as a tsundere. It is so damn great the way her character bounces off Saitama's with her used to just being the strongest at everything, and all of a sudden, I, I don't know. I had a big problem with this episode of Honest Descriptions, and that was, I ended up finding ways to honestly compliment the characters more than usual. Usually, Honest Descriptions, no one ends up happy, because I'm a bit of a sarcastic asshole insulting them, but with One Punch Man, I figure you gotta hit fire with fire. You can't make fun of comedy characters. That's just stupid. It doesn't work. So, I figured the best way to do it was to show the absolute epicness in their writing itself. Now, that may be an excuse in order for me to not make fun of brilliant freaking characters, because One Punch Man is one of the best shows ever, but even if it is an excuse, this isn't Honest Descriptions, and that's basically like saying, please, come into Nux's world. I'm sorry if you're unhappy with the result, but when I said I'm sorry, I was actually lying. Definitely subscribe for more One Punch Man content, satire content, or One Punch Man analyses, which I'm having so much fun doing. They're so good. I love One Punch Man. What, what's that? Oh, you're saying I forgot the number one hero. Oh, that's strange. That's right. He didn't show up to the hero meeting at the end of the S-Class conference in the Boros arc. Um, right. So his name is Blast, and he's never been seen in the anime or even in the manga. There's so many theories as to who he is. I was talking to friends about it. Some people think that he's Saitama from a different universe or different timeline that somehow clashed with their own. Some people think that he'll end up just being some really epically powerful hero, and it'll be up to Saitama to hold himself back not to fight this guy who potentially can give him a fun fight at last. I could totally see that being the reality, but I think I know his identity, so spoilers, it's Moomin Rider. No one else would have the guts to fight Garo without wearing a tank top and can simultaneously cycle while standing. Subscribe and shiz. Stay weird, fam.